But as I mentioned in the previous session, right? Not all boards, not all processors, all not all architectures on Linux kernel uses device tree. Most of them uses device tree, but the legacy processors like your x86, why I'm calling legacy means because it's out there from very long time. And they have their own infrastructure for all these mechanisms. They derived and developed their own system for all of these things. For example, for your x86, uses ACPI table, as I mentioned last time. And your ARM uses something called as a device tree. Okay. So now, how do you figure out that a specific configuration is for ACPI or a device tree? In a kernel, somewhere you will find a match table. So what is a match table? If you remember, right, I showed you something that is a compatible, where it has to match. Because normally, right, your driver also should have something telling that, yes, I want this only, this particular device only to work. Okay. Somewhere in the device also should tell, yes, I want some driver, which I have, I have to indicate to the device telling that, yes, I am, uh, my uh, uh, details are this. That is when the match happens. Okay, it is something like you are giving an identification to the device telling that this is the uh, identification for the device. And the driver tells that if I find a device with this identification, I will start working. Or I will get activated or I will become, I know that I have to start uh, working. That is how it works, basically. Okay, so, but to do that in the current, in the driver, we will have something called as an OF match table for your device tree. And you will have some, one more entry called ACPI match table for your ACPI entities. So if I look at this, if you look at your driver and if you see for this, where and all this AP, ACPI match table will be there. And this is the details about for your ACPI. For example, let me go to this GPI XLP.C. See, it has ACPI match table. See, it has ACPI match table details. And if you see here, this is for, and it supports both ACPI match table and it also supports, basically this particular driver supports, works on x86 also, and this works on ARM architecture also. How, how, would I, how will I get to know? See, it has OF match table also, and it has ACPI match table also. See here, this is an OF match table, if you see here. I will explain how exactly it happens and other things. See, this is one is an OCPI match table. Okay, so in this, I'm telling that what to match. If you look at what to match here, OF match table, I'm giving all the ideas what has to match. And if you look at this IDs, right, whenever somebody puts, uh, somebody, any of the device comes with a compatible field of this, it will get activated. Or if any of the device comes with this field, entry in the device tree, this will get activated. Or if it finds this. So if it finds any of this entry in the device tree, this will get activated automatically. This is for your device tree. So this is very important. Keep this in mind. This is very important. And this will be a unique ID for each device. No two devices will have the same ID. It's like an identification. And once you come to the device tree also, if you see here, same IDs will be used. See? Compatible this, compatible this, compatible this. This is what you will find. Okay. So that is the same entry you would find here in this specific parts also. And this is for your device tree. This is how you will get to know, yes, this driver supported device tree. And this OF match table is very important. And similarly, it will also maintain an ACPI match table. See here, this is how the ACPI match table will be put up. And this will get activated only if the ACPI is enabled. Else, it will uh, not use this. But in it will use the but device tree is always there. But to support AC uh, to support x86, basically ACPI is the, uh, not ACPI or not, it will be defined by this configured for ACPI. Most probably on x86, it will get activated. And how do I define it? Here I have given an idea. BRCM9006, CAV9006. This details comes from the your ACPI table. If you remember, I showed you that ACPI dump, right? It was in a binary form. But if you look at it, it comes from that ACPI, you will get this detail. And the moment this match occurs from an ACPI table, immediately this driver gets activated. Okay, so this is one of the main thing you have to keep in mind, actually. Okay, so any doubts or questions till this point? So you have to either look for an ACPI match table or you have to look for this OF match table. So the moment you see the ACPI match table, this is the one. And if you see an OF match table, it looks something like this. Okay. So based on this, you can determine whether your driver will work with using an ACPI table or is it whether your driver will work using the device-free subsystem. That is what you can see in many cases. You can see this specific scenario. 
For example, you can see here there is some uh, TIADC. If you see this, this has device tree subsystem also. See, it has OF match table. And then it has ACPI match table also. Both it supports. So it supports device tree also. It supports ACP also. This specific hardware supports both ACP and device tree. This is something what we will get from this flow. This is very important. Okay. So as I mentioned, I think I already showed you the dump last time. So same like a device tree blob, right? You will also find an ACP dump which is nothing but a kind of a dump derived using an ACPI source only. They'll compile it and they will, the same like device tree compiler, they will have some other entity. They'll get a device tree blob out of it and they will load it into the motherboard and they will ship it. So what will happen is kernel will read this particular ACPI and it will get to know what all things it has to configure for this board and it will keep configure everything based on that. That is something what you'll be able to see in this specific scenario actually. Okay, so that is one of the main thing what you have to see. That is one of the main reason. And as I mentioned, once the system boots up, right? In case of x86, it will extract ACP and based on that, it will do the, all the dynamic configuration. In case of an ARM, it, the device blob will be, uh, there will be a device blob available in the Linux uh, in your bootloader. And so in many cases, it can select different different uh, device tree based on the board configuration. And it is a responsibility of the bootloader to do it. You can provide only blob, only one blob, or you can provide n number of blob based on multiple device variants, what you have. So your it's a responsibility of the bootloader to pick up one device tree blob, similar to the case what I showed in Raspberry Pi. There are n device tree blobs available. So your decision should be made by the bootloader telling that, yes, I'm working on this specific board. I have to use only this device tree blob. And this device tree blob should be fit to your it will be loaded somewhere in the memory, and that particular specific address will be given to your. kernel to start working. Okay, so we will see all of those things. That is how it works. But ACPI, as I mentioned, it more comes from your BIOS. So once uh, both, but ultimately both ACPI and device tree loading responsibility is with uh, your bootloader only. What we call it as a BIOS in case of your x86. And in case of an ARM, it can be anything else. Like U-boot is the most common one. So you'll find U-boot. And it is the responsibility of the U-boot to take care of it. Okay, as I mentioned, ACPI is something where they do take care in case of an x86. That is something what I wanted to mention. And as I mentioned, right, ACPI already we did a dump last time. For at least for my board, you can try on your board and you can check out on your x86 subsystem and you can check out what you get it. Okay. So if you do, do this, you'll get a lot of details actually. Okay, so just give me a second. We need pseudo right. See, this is the ACPI dump, what I have on my system. You can check out here. So these are all features or something that is activated on my system. You can check out a lot of configurations are available, which will set up my, which will, uh, which will use this and it will set up my complete system. At least the, my PC it will set up. That is what you can see in this specific case. Okay, as I mentioned in the previous session. So either you will get from this or you will do the specific parts. Okay, so in case, as I mentioned, right, in case of an ARM, right, it will be, it is a responsibility of a new image. Okay, so before we used to do via ATAC, as I was showed in the previous thing, so in case of A, they were in the old boards where the device tree was not there, right, the necessary, not full set configuration, very small configuration used to go via ATAC, and that ATAC address used to be there in R3. And what machine it is used to come in an R1 address on an ARM processor, we have to fill it. But after the introduction of this device tree, right, I will just show you, just give me a second. So we put R2 will now contain the device tree blob address. So you have the, your bootloader should load the device tree somewhere in the memory and that address should be put into the R2. That is how we will do in case of our ARM um, subsystem as you can see it actually okay yeah so that is one of the main thing we can have a look at actually if you see this specific scenario okay so this is how we do it okay so any doubts or questions till this point did you understood what is the purpose of device tree and how it is loaded whose responsibility is to load it and see the compilation is the user responsibility he has to compile and then he has to give the access to that device tree block to your bootloader
chapter, then after this, bootloader will take care of the complete system. This is the main part which I wanted to stress here. So any doubts or questions till this point? The same sequence is mentioned here, if you look at here. See here? So you'll have a device tree files. That is nothing but a DTS files, whatever I showed. So your device tree compiler will come into the picture and it'll compile and generate a device tree blob, the binary one. And that device tree blob has to be given to the bootloader. So bootloader will do an hardware detection. If there are n number of device tree blobs, in the same example, if you see here, it is not one device tree blob. It has n number of device tree blobs generated. You can see by the symbol only, there are n number of device tree blobs. So based on the hardware detection, what it does is it selects the right device tree blob and then it will load into the memory. And that loaded memory address will be put into the R2 address. There is nothing but a register, a register R2, you put an address and then it will load the kernel and it will boot the kernel. So the moment the kernel comes up, it will look at the R2, it will get to know that yes, there is a device tree, it will read the device tree. Then after that, it will load all the elements, it will load the devices. And then it will basically it create something called as a device instance. Okay, so device instance is nothing but uh, it will create kind of an instance telling that uh, this device is there. Okay, and then after that it will run, it will uh, associate the driver and it will start running the driver. This is how this subsystem would work like. This is the flow basically that happens on your x86 subsystem as you look out in this case. Yeah. So this is one of the main thing which I wanted to stress in this specific case where the flow really goes about okay